Hey guys, DJ here at Top Deck Cards and Games. Today I'm going to talk about the 10 cards from Circuit Break that I like the most. Um, that doesn't mean necessarily the 10 best cards from the set or the 10 cards that you're going to see the most, though I, I'd like to think that for the most part it is the 10 most likely to see constructed play cards in the set. Um, I'm sure I missed something, so this definitely isn't like an end-all list. Uh, additionally, there are zero cards from the Rocket, Metaphys, or Altergeist themes in these stacks. Uh, so right now, I don't think any of those themes are actually any good. Um, maybe down the road they will be. Maybe they're getting more support. That's the kind of thing that I don't know. Um, so maybe those cards will all be really good one day, but right now I don't see them as being good cards. So I have gone ahead and sorted these by rarity and then by uh, alphabetic order after that because I don't feel like trying to find a way to order them uh, by me actually saying this is the 10th best card in the set and this is the best card in the set. Um, because I really don't know. I just think these are 10 cards that are really good. So I tried to make it as uh, meaningless of a sorting process as possible here. So we're just going to start and go through. First up, I have Lyra Lusk Recital Starling. This card is going to be really big in Spiral. Um, and if rank ones in general are usable, I think this is a fine card. Basically, what it does is let you search out DD Crow so you can have some sort of disruption. Uh, additionally, whenever you summon it, uh, you get to give a monster plus 300 for each material on this card. So it lets you also pump guys up over Masterpiece in some situations. So it's a really powerful card that's got a lot of utility. Uh, I think you're gonna see this, not that it's an all-star or anything, but make sure I read this wrong. Yeah, I read this right, yeah. <clears throat> so it's a powerful card. You're gonna see it a decent bit, especially for the spiral part of the format, um, which I think you're gonna play against a lot of spiral here in the next few months. So definitely a card that you're gonna be seeing. The next common is Nimble Beaver. Nimble Beaver is a tour guide-esque effect. You summon it, you get a special a level three or lower Nimble from your deck. Uh, also, he is a beaver, which is sick. Um, I've played my fair share of decks with Nimble Angler in them because I think it's actually a broken card, though <laughs> right now it's nowhere close to being broken, but uh, I think there's a lot of fun things you can do with this card. I mean, just normal summonable rank two isn't bad. So I think there's some room to see this uh, in play, though I'm not sure it'll ever actually make it into a great constructed deck. I do think that it is playable, and if there's a deck that needs to just have more access to rank twos, this is a card that you could definitely look to play. Next up is Destrudo. We're into the rare portion of the pack. Destrudo, the Lost Dragon's Frisson. Uh, Destrudo is an insanely strong card. You're going to see this guy everywhere. I think everyone who has been paying attention is already familiar with what he does, but uh, essentially he is a body that's going to get into play for free. He's a tuner. Uh, he's always going to be able to make a level 7 for you. So that means in the coming format, in the present metagame, he's going to be able to make Ancient Fairy Dragon, uh, maybe Black Rose Dragon. There's a couple other level 7s that he might be useful for. Uh, but basically what this card does with Dragon's Ravine is give you another use for your terraforming effects. You can always get Ravine, pitch Destrudo to your grave, and then make an additional play. Um, just a really, really good card. It's a dark, so it's an irrelevant type for a lot of different attributes, or a lot of different cards, rather. Um, and I think you're going to see a lot of Destrudo. The next rare is Fire King Avatar uh, Avarda? Arvada, yeah. Uh, this is a card that I read for the first time in my pre-release opening, actually. Uh, I knew he was in the set, and I knew he was a solid Fire King card, but I hadn't read him before then. And I'm actually really impressed with what this card does. I'm going to zoom this in a little more. I'm actually really impressed by this card. Um, I think it's extremely strong. Uh, basically, if it's in play, it's an 1800 meter, which means you have a decent control over the board, just as far as a normal summonable monster goes. Then when a monster's effect activates, you get to destroy, uh, not itself, but another one of your monsters, right? Yeah, destroy one other fire monster in your hand or field, and then uh, negate the activation. So what that's going to do is let you set off your Fire King effects. I'm not sure if that's the best use for it. Maybe it'll be better uh, popping an Infernoid or something like that. But either way, it's a strong effect. It's a level 4 monster that's just got built-in monster negation on it. Um, and I think this card could see a lot of play if the right shell exists for it. On to the supers. Uh, another one of the best cards in this set, number 41, Baguska, the terribly tired taper. Uh, Baguska has been the center of some controversy because his Japanese art had him drinking, and now he is just tired. Personally, I like this more. He's a terribly tired taper, and that's amazing. Uh, this card's just broken. I'm going to just read it to you guys because its effect is a little bit confusing to me to just word off, but... Once per turn, during your standby phase, detach material from this card. If you cannot destroy it, this attack position card cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Your opponent cannot target this attack position card with card effects. While this card is face up, 
<coughs> while this card is in face-up defense position, excuse me, change all face-up monsters on the field to defense position. Also, negate the activated effects of monsters that were in defense position when that effect was activated. So basically, it just stops everything. Your opponent either can't do anything to kill it, or their monsters sit in defense and their effects are going to be negated. Uh, he does have an upkeep cost, so he's going to kill himself after a couple turns. But he sets up a really strong position where your opponent can't do too much when you just make him and put him on the board. Uh, you're going to see a lot of Baguskas running around, I think. He's a very strong card and uh, really neat, actually. So definitely something to look out for. Next card is something that I heard about uh, recently, actually, and I think it's a really interesting card, Quiet Life. Quiet Life can only be activated during your main phase one, and then... The way it works is you have to control no monsters, but then if a player normal summons or sets, they can't special summon. And if a player special summons, they can't normal summon or set. So it basically makes your opponent choose how they'd like to summon monsters every turn. Um, I don't know if right now is the best time for this card. I think there's a lot of ways that you can get around using your normal summon. Uh, but it does limit your plays in all situations. I mean, if you have to skip your normal summon, that can be brutal. Uh, and if you can only normal summon, that's... It's just not good right now. Maybe there's, I mean, certainly there are decks where you can take advantage of that, you know, hero beat stun style decks. But I don't think in the current metagame there's many decks that are going to be happy about using only their normal summons. So decks are going to have to find a way, if you have in play, to operate solely through their special summons, which I think is really uh, unique and powerful. Ultra, I have Spiral Double Helix. Uh, probably the card you're going to play against the most from the set until something happens to Spiral, if anything happens to Spiral. Uh, Double Helix lets you special summon a Spiral Monster from your deck. You have to call the top card of your opponent's deck correctly, which turns out, given the mechanics of the Spiral deck, uh, is basically free. You're going to get that right most of the time and summon a monster. Uh, his name is treated as Super Agent as well, so you're able to get some value there with the cards that require you to have a Super Agent in play. Um, additionally, you actually don't have to special summon the monster. If you hit with it, you can add it to your hand, which means you can just build up your resources for another turn. Uh... This is the card that made Spiral really good, obviously. Like, nothing else really needed to exist for the deck other than this card, and suddenly it's a playable deck. So, definitely a really good card that you're going to see some more of. Starting the Seeker Rares, I have Akashic Magician. Uh, I don't know if this card is actually going to see a ton of play, but I like the possibility to just make a link to drop this and bounce your opponent's monster. Um, I think that's really strong. I'm not sure if it'll work out that way all that often. Uh, additionally, it's a link to that's not totally generic, uh, it has to be two monsters with the same type, and they can't be tokens, but it's reasonably easy to make, and it gives you a, a two scale, or not two scale, link two that points down, so that you can use that to set up your board a little bit better when you're trying to make a, a big link board. Um, so it's a card that I'm really interested in. It also has the effect to name a card, then you excavate top card of your deck until you hit, or not until you hit, but you excavate the top card of your deck, up to the number of uh, links that are co-linked to it. So if you're in a really dire situation, you can use that mechanic to try to find the card that you need, um, as well as getting some cards into your graveyard. So it's not a, not a great ability, but I mean, it is strong. I like that it's fairly generic and can bounce an opponent's monster, and it gets you a down arrow. So definitely a card that I think you're going to see a little bit of, uh, definitely if the right deck exists. Then Borlo Dragon. Cover card of the set, Link 4. Uh, really powerful card. You're going to see this in a lot of decks as well. Uh, I'm going to read this because it's text. It's kind of confusing to me. Neither player can target this card with monster effects. Once per turn, quick effect, you can target one face of monster on the field and it loses 500 attack and defense. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect activation. At the start of damage step, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, you can place that opponent's monster in a zone that this card points to and take control of it, but send it to the graveyard during the end phase of the next turn. So, really powerful card, right? It's hard to, not hard to make, but it's a lot of resources to make it since it's a Link 4. Um, but what it's going to let you do, basically, is just take control of your opponent's monsters. It's a hard card for your opponent to interact with. Uh, taking control of your monsters is going to give you inherent card advantage and inherent boost to your damage. Uh, it's just a really strong card. I think it's really powerful if you can get it into play, and you're going to have to watch out uh, and consider that your opponent can make this card at all times. Then the last card, and... Maybe not the strongest card from the set, but certainly one of the most hyped, is Evenly Matched. Uh, evenly Matched is a really powerful card, but it is kind of specific how it works. Uh, it's a lot like Exiton Knight, so basically at the end of the battle phase, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, you can make them banish cards from their field face down so they control the same number of cards as you. If you control no cards, you can activate it from your hand. So what this is going to let you do going second is basically give up your main phase one and your battle phase for a turn and just activate evenly matched, clear your opponent's board. The cards are banished, so effects that are going to prevent destruction aren't going to stop it. 
Um, that being said, this is not a very good card, like, actually to set as a trap card. It's not going to really save you, you know, it has to be activated at the end of your battle phase, not end of the battle phase. So you can use it during your opponent's battle, but... So what that's going to do is let them make their play, make their attack, and deal with your board. Um, yes, you can evenly match them afterwards, but that all assumes that you didn't expend a lot of resources or that they didn't just kill you in their battle. Uh, going second, it is really strong. Your opponent is able to kind of force you around it by uh, playing a card like Set Rotation to give you cards on the field so that they can't just play for free from their hand. Um, some other things that they can do to interact with it are just not overextend as much on the board. Um, that, that doesn't really mean too much in current Yu-Gi-Oh, right? You're going to put the best cards on the board for whatever situation. Uh, but when I say overextend, I mostly mean they'll put themselves in a position where they can make another play the next turn. Um, if you're holding evenly matched and your opponent doesn't go completely off, like you still have to do something that's evenly matched or it's a dead card. So your opponent doesn't necessarily have to always present themselves in a situation where this is just going to blow the game wide open. Uh, I do think it's a good card. I think it's going to see a decent amount of play. I know some people have already talked about playing it alongside Swift Scarecrow. Um, there's plenty of hand traps that you can play with it to make sure your opponent doesn't kill you that specific turn, then evenly match them on the uh, backswing so that you're able to keep yourself in the game. And I do like that it's a board wipe that's not stopped by cards like my body or any sort of destruction prevention. So I think it is a really strong card, and I understand where the hype is coming from, though I'm currently kind of suspect if it's as good as people think. Uh, I'll definitely want to play with it some more just to see if it's as good as I think it is or as good as they think it is, rather, and maybe uh, it's somewhere in the middle between the two. So just to get back through these, 10 cards I think are really good to watch for in this set. Uh, evenly matched, Borlo Dragon, Akashic Magician, Spiral Double Helix, Quiet Life, Number 41 Baguska, Fire King Avrata, Destrudo, Nimble Beaver, and Lyralusk. I think these cards are all great. I put that a little bit off the screen. Let me scoot them up for you. Man, I made this too small. That's all right. I think these cards are all great, and I think these are the 10 cards that I'm the most excited for in the set. Um, some of them are speculative. You know, like these cards that go in Spiral are all obviously very good. You're going to see a lot of these ones. Uh, you're going to see evenly mashed, especially as people try it up front. I think a Akashic Magician might fit into Spiral, might be good in other decks. I'm not sure exactly where you're going to see it. And then cards like Quiet Life, Nimble Beaver, and Averada uh, are definitely strong cards. I'm not sure exactly where they'll end up. Maybe we'll have to brew up a shell to fit some of these cards in, but I think they have the potential to be really, really strong moving forward. Uh, so those are the 10 cards that I'm the most excited about from Circuit Break. Let me know if you guys have any cards down below that you're really excited about, any cards that I didn't talk about, or any points about these cards even that you think I didn't make that other people should know. Um, I'm sure some of the cards from those other themes are also really good, but given that I don't see a place in the meta for them, uh, I didn't think I should include them in this list. So I don't see a way that I'm able to build those decks right now, but if you guys have ideas to build those as well, let me know down below. Maybe we can work together on something that turns out to be really great. So thanks a ton for watching, guys. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is a spiral video for you guys just to talk about the deck, um, get a starting point for you guys to work from, and maybe we can figure out the best way to deal with that metagame. So thanks a ton for watching. We're going to have more Yu-Gi-Oh! coming at you soon.